Chapter 1 Glorious Grace And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, Grace, Grace. Zechariah 4 7. The mercy of God, that attribute which we, the fallen sinful race of Adam, stand in greatest need of, and God has been pleased according to our needs more gloriously to manifest this attribute than any other. The wonders of divine grace are the greatest of all wonders. The wonders of divine power and wisdom in the making of this great world are marvelous. Other wonders of His justice in punishing sin are wonderful. Many wonderful things have happened since the creation of the world, but none like the wonders of grace. Grace, grace, is the sound that the gospel rings with. Grace, grace, will be that shout which will ring in heaven forever. And perhaps what the angels sung at the birth of Christ, of God's good will towards men, is the highest theme that ever they entered upon. In order to understand the words of our text, we are to take notice that the scope and design of the chapter is to comfort and encourage the children of Israel, returned out of their Babylonish captivity in the building of Jerusalem and the temple, who it seems were very much disheartened by reason of the opposition they met with in the work, and the want of the external glory of the former temple before the captivity, so that the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers wept aloud as the rest shouted at the sight, as you may see in Ezra 3.12, but many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers, who were ancient men that had seen the first house, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy. You may see a full account of their great oppositions and discouragements in the fourth and fifth chapters. The prophets Haggai and Zechariah were sent on this occasion to comfort them under those discouragements by foretelling the glories of the gospel should be displayed in this latter house, which should render the glories of it far beyond the glories of the former, notwithstanding it was so far exceeded in what is external. In Haggai 2, 3, 9, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do ye see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts, according to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Thank you for listening to this sample. The full-length audiobook may be purchased exclusively at audible.com, amazon.com, or the iTunes store. For additional Christian audiobooks or to learn how we can narrate your own book, please go to godsounds.com. God Sounds, where faith is heard.